All right, so questions similar to this have appeared on standardized math tests that people have to take to enter graduate school in mathematics in the USA. And it seems deceptively simple, but let's dive into it and make it really easy. So here we have the numbers 2 power half, 3 power 1 third, and 6 power 1 sixth, which is the square root of 2, the third root of 3, cube root of 3, and the sixth root of 6. And we want to figure out how to arrange them in the correct order. So we're given four multiple choice options. What's the right order of these numbers? And let's just dive into it. So the way I like to think about this, first of all, is fractions are not nice. You know, we really can't get a sense of 6 power 1 over 6 that easily or 3 power 1 third that easily. But what we can do is we can clear denominators just like we do when solving equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the numbers 2 power 1 half, 3 power 1, three, 1 over 3, and 6 power 1 over 6. And I'm going to make everything a nice whole number. So I'm going to power 2 power half by 6, and I'm going to power 6 power 1 over 6 by 6, and 3 power 1 third by 6. Why? Because 6 is, has 2 and 3 as factors. So when we power 2 power half by 6, and at the end of the video, I'm going to show you some interesting insights beyond this, okay? So watch till the end for that. But if we power 2 power half by 6, the point is that if you power 2 power half by 2, you get 2, right? So powering 2 power half by 6 is the same as powering 2 power half by 2 and then powering it by 3, which is just going to equal to 2 cubed, which is 8. Okay, so that's why I powered by 6 to make it a nice number, and it's going to work for all of these. So similarly, we can do 3 power 1 over 3, and we can power that by 6. And similarly, we can do 6 power 1 over 6 and power that by 6. And for the same reasoning, 6 power 1 over 6 power 6 is just 6. But 3 power 1 over 3 power 6 is going to be, it's going to be really surprising now. Because 6 is 2 times 3. 3 power 1 over 3 power 3 is just 3. And then we have to square that. So we're just going to get 3 power 1 over 3 power 3 times 2. And again, you get 3 power 2, which is just going to equal to 9. Now, why is this interesting and how do we explain this? Because here what we see is that 2 power half power 6 is 8, 3 power 1 third power 6 is 9, so it increases, but then it drops back down to 6. And because the order of the numbers doesn't change when you power by 6, the correct order for these numbers is going to be 2 power half is less than 3 power 1 over 3, which in turn is greater than 6 power 1 over 6. The correct option is just going to be we see that we know that 2 power half is less than 3 power 1 over 3, and we also know that that's going to be greater than 6 power 1 over 6, which is the smallest number. So the correct option is just going to be this one, it's option C, that's our answer. And now a natural question is why? You know, what's happening? Is this something that kind of is just random? Suppose I looked at 9 power 1 over 9, or if I looked at 12 power 1 over 12, does it kind of randomly fluctuate between the options? So let's find out, and I'm going to show you something really cool. It's a glimpse into higher math if you haven't seen it before. The glimpse is that if I look at the function, which is f of x equals x power 1 over x. Now, if you're not familiar with functions, don't worry. It's just an input and an output. x is the input, x power 1 over x is the output. I can graph this function to give me an idea of what the numbers look like as x equals 2, x equals 3, x equals 6, which are the numbers we played around with in this problem over here. But in general, what it looks like is it looks something like this. It's sort of, it's undefined at 0. It's defined for x greater than 0. It kind of goes up. It hits a peak, and then it goes down. And it stabilizes, and it gets closer and closer to 1 as x gets larger and larger. So this is the line y equals 1. It's a value of the function. And what happens is that if you take the thousand root of thousand, the millionth root of million, etc., you're going to get numbers that are closer and closer to 1 as you're taking larger and larger inputs. Um, but the peak happens somewhere between 2 and 3. Okay? And it happens at this number, which is called e. It's a very special number. It's 2.7 something, something, something. And that's where the max of the function appears, and then it goes down. And that's what happens with 6. When you get to 6, it's already gone pretty, pretty far down. So what happens is 3 still is not too far below the max, whereas 2 is a bit more. So you get the correct order of these values. 6 is going to be all the way down here. It's going to be really low. 
and that's going to be the, the explanation. And, and this is our function. And so if you want to understand E really deeply, I have a really cool video for you. I've explained it in a way that most people don't know, even mathematicians. It's really related to our finances. And you can check out that video here. It's gonna pop up on the screen. I'll see you in that video. Don't forget to drop a comment on this one, what math you'd like to see. And if you have any thoughts about this problem and answer this question. Is the thousandth root of a thousand less or greater than the thousand and first root of thousand and one using what I just said here? Drop a comment down below. Check me out in that video. I'll see you in that video and I wish you an amazing day.